Hello. Ok pessoal, good afternoon for everyone, Julia, Caio, beleza? Vocês são às oito, então deve estar cá. Cadê o Kitchen Toys? Vamos ver se o negócio vai travar ou não. Já começa agora. Ó oh, pessoal, vou ver se travar, eu volto de novo aqui porque esse vídeo é suspeito. Vamos falar sobre coisas de cozinha. Então vamos começar já, é re... para não perder muita coisa, com essa revisão. Learn English with pictures. 22 things in the kitchen from espressoenglish.net Measuring cup Use a measuring cup to measure how much of each ingredient you need to use in the recipe. Many measuring cups are labeled in cups, ounces, and milliliters. Can opener. There is also an automatic type called an electric can opener. Peeler. Use a peeler to peel. Remove the skin from fruits and vegetables. Grater. Use a grater to grate or shred food into small pieces. Colander. A colander is often used to drain, remove the extra water, from cooked pasta. Sieve or strainer. A sieve or strainer is often used to separate liquids from solids. Whisk. A whisk is used for mixing. Spatula Ladle A ladle is a big spoon used for serving soup. Pan A pan is often used for frying food, cooking it in oil. Pot A pot is often used for boiling food, cooking it in water. The top part of the pot is called a lid or cover. It can be made of metal or glass. Oven mitt and pot holder. An oven mitt and a pot holder help protect your hands when you touch hot pots and pans. Baking pan and cookie sheet. A baking pan is used for baking, cooking things in the oven. A flatter version is called a cookie sheet. Tongs. You can use tongs to pick up food. Utensils. Knife, spoon, fork. You use a knife, spoon, and fork to eat food. Together, these items are called utensils. Bowl. You can serve soup, salad, or fruit in a bowl. Plate. You can serve food on a plate. Plastic container. You can put leftovers, food that you will save for later, in a plastic container. Sandwich bag or Ziploc bag. You can also preserve food in a sandwich bag. One very popular brand of sandwich bags is called Ziploc, so some people call these Ziploc bags. 
If you want to learn a lot more new words, check out my Vocabulary Builder course, which will help you learn and practice more than 500 words in each level. Click on the link in the video or in the description for more information. Ok, isso aqui é uma parte dos, dos vocabulários de cozinha. Vamos lá. Mas antes de mais nada, é o seguinte. No sistema, nós temos o que? As formas de frituras, né? Está aqui a imagem, bake, forno seria, né? É, fry, mix, boil, cozinhar, né? Peel, descascar e cut, cortar. Eu acho que isso aqui é bem objetivo, então não tem tanto que... É, saiu. Certo? Mas aqui não, aqui é, um, é só vocabulário mesmo. Deixa eu só terminar esse vocabulário, então. Kitchen utensils. Apron. E aí, pessoal, tem uma travadinha nesse vídeo aí? Beleza? Hello, hello! Mas, enfim, são os, os, os produtos de casa, né? De cozinha, que é o que está pedindo aqui. Infelizmente, o meu vídeo está travado, então eu já passei um o anterior para ter uma ideia do que é. Bom... Só um minuto, que eu acho que eu tô com... Tá? Só colocar aqui. Esse fio like, na verdade, significa... Espera aí, deixa eu só colocar um... Apagar esse anterior. Vamos ah, você, sabe? Hum? Certo? Significa ter vontade de. Então. Aumentar aqui o tamanho da fonte, né? Ó, pessoal. Eu só que meu YouTube tá... Pera aí, só Jesus na causa. 
Ok? Então, feel like significa ter vontade de. Porque ele aparece aqui, né? Nessas traduções. Ele aparece aqui, ó. I feel like work at gym. Né? Eu tenho vontade, eu gostaria né, de estar trabalhando, de, de estar trabalhando em uma academia. E ele aparece feel like em diversas, diversas ocasiões. What do you feel like doing today? O que você gostaria de estar fazendo hoje? O que você tem vontade de fazer hoje? Write a sentence using feel like and the word given run. Esse é um exercício para fazer no caderno, na verdade. Com feel like. Mas eu vou segurar ele já. Então a gente vai começar com o seguinte. Nós utilizamos sempre os... A gente está usando aqui para que fique claro. Não sei se vocês viram na descrição. Certo? Tá? É isso que nós estamos utilizando. E nele já começa com... Volta... Tem um texto aqui, que comeu o texto. Calma, deixa eu aparecer aqui esse texto. Ó, ah, não tem o texto, perdão. Capítulo 1. Para traduzir, né? I haven't decided yet. Also, that's the point. And that's not easy, boy. A gente vai completar aqui, na verdade, com Ana. Colocando o verbo to be aqui em todos eles. Lembrando que quem é o Ana, na verdade, eu não gosto desse Ana muito, mas assim, o Ana, na verdade, opa, tem algo errado aqui, não tá certo, calma aí, pessoas. O Ana é uma abreviação de want, tá? É isso, ó. Tá? Querer. A diferença dos dois é que quando você conjuga o Ana, né? Só um second, personas. Tirar uma... Tá? A diferença é que o wanna você não conjuga que nem o want. Se fosse o verbo want, nesse caso, ele sofreria, sofreria alteração. Eu vou ter que pôr por partes aqui. É, já tem o wanna, eu desço e tiro ele. Ó. Tá? Fica assim. E o want também é igual a querer. A diferença entre os dois é que quando nós conjugamos com wanna, 
obviamente, ele vai sofrer uma alteração na terceira pessoa. Ó. Tá vendo? Quando chegar aqui no ri, ele vai ficar. Opa, faltou um. It. Ele vai ficar. Opa, once, ó, com S. Tá vendo? Fica desse jeito, ó. Só na terceira pessoa ele aparece com um S. Só que isso não acontece com o Ana. Para todas as pessoas, esse Ana é igual. Não é muito comum em outros lugares, a não ser o United States, né? Eu coloco que é mais comum lá. Aparece até, mas mais famoso por lá. Quando vai para a interrogativa, ele vai se utilizar de do e das para interrogativas, né? E do don't, né? E doesn't para negativas. Então essas são as formas que ele aparecem. Lembrando que, que aí vai ter que lembrar a regra do do e do does, mas eu vou tentar deixar claro. O does, ele é usado para he, she, it e singulares. E o do é usado para I, you e plural. Vamos ser mais práticos aqui, só um minuto. Para preencher antes de preencher o exercício, já segura aí um minuto, pessoas. Tem que achar o simple present. Só um minuto. Preciso do do e does aqui. How to use. Eu acho que é esse mesmo. Começar a separar direito. Não tem aquele mesmo, que o resto vai ter maravilha. Bom, é esse mesmo. Não coloquei aqui, mas eu tenho aqui um exemplo de presente simples para dar uma clareada. Então é ele mesmo. Era para ele estar aqui amanhã. Hello everyone, this is Mr. P. Today we're going to talk about the simple present tense or the present simple, as you wish. We have three sentences right here. He is Canadian, he doesn't speak German. Do you understand? Okay, let's get down to it. So let's look at the timeline. The yellow star represents the present simple. So you can see it in the past, now, and in the future. But why is that? Well, I will explain in a minute. Let's first take a look at the forming the simple present or the present simple. We need, as you may know already, we need a helping verb, auxiliary verb, to make questions and negative sentences. The auxiliary verb in this case, or helping verb, is to, and for the third person singular, is does. Does, again, is for he, 
she and it only. So, to make questions, we need the following formula. WH question word. So that would be who, where, when, how, etc. If you have them, then HV for helping verb or auxiliary verb. Then we need a subject because it's a question, right? And then we need the verb. For example, do you eat meat? For the third person singular would be does she work? So does she work? Not do she work, okay? Does she work? What about a negative sentence? Well, for negative sentences, we need the subject plus we need the helping verb or auxiliary verb plus not because it's negative plus verb, the base of the verb plus the object if you have an object. For example, I do not eat meat. I don't or I do not eat meat. She does not or she doesn't work. She does not or she doesn't work. Pay close attention to the third person singular. Now what happens with the positive sentences? And this is where it gets complicated a little. So for I, you, we, and they, the pronouns, I mean, so that would be the subject. Then we need a verb, the base of the verb, no change, plus the object, if you have an object. For example, I eat meat every Monday. So that's a time expression. I eat meat every Monday. So that's easy. How about um, the third person singular? Well, for the third person singular, we have subject plus verb plus s plus object. She works. She works every day. She works every day. So we need to add an s to the verb and that is work so works she works every weekday I'm sorry not every day every weekday so what happens with the verb to be well the verb to be is a uh, particular why because it follows um, another rule um, so for example for a, um, a positive sentence I am um, a student. I am Canadian. I am a man. For the third person singular here, there is no change because the verb to be acts by itself. So you don't need anything else. You don't need another verb. He is a student. They are smart. So no change. What happens with a negative sentence? Well, you just write uh, the not right after the verb to be. Like in my example. I am not, I am not, I'm not a student. He is not, he isn't Canadian. They are not, they aren't old. So what about a question? Well, in a question, we just have to invert the subject and the verb to be in this case. So, are you Spanish? Are you Spanish? Is he old? Are they students? So, that's the present simple for the verb to be. Now, we uh, know that um, when you see time expressions and adverbs of time, um, they indicate the tense you need to use. In this case, I listed some of them. There are many others. So for time expressions, I listed every day, every weekend, in the morning, twice a month, four times a day, etc. 
the adverbs of time that you might uh, find in a sentence in the present simple tense are always, often, seldom, usually, never, etc. Now, this is the most important part of the, uh, the simple present tense explanation, and that is its uses. So, the first one, and that's why it's highlighted in yellow, is the most important part, the most important usage. So, everyday activities, routines, and habits. So, number two, and changing emotions and wishes. General truths. Number four, giving instructions or directions. Number five, expressing fixed arrangements. And number six, telling a story. Now I'm going to give you um, examples for each. So don't worry if you didn't understand that. So for number one, everyday activities, and this is the most common one, I wrote, I study English every day. She studies English every day. Pay attention to the third person singular. So we have the verb that finishes with Y. So D, Y consonant plus Y. So I need to change that Y into I. So she studies English every day. The next example. They brush their teeth every morning. He brushes es his teeth every morning and the last uh, example we wake up late on weekends he wakes up late on weekends okay so you can see the third person singular again with the s es or ies there are different rules for for that so i will uh, create another video to explain those rules. So let's go on. Number two, unchanging emotions or wishes. For example, I love dancing. That means you loved it yesterday, you love it now, and you will probably love it in the future. So love dancing. He hate, He likes watching movies. He likes watching movies. So you can see the S in like. They hate studying. They hate studying. These are all emotions. There is another um, lesson on this um, topic, so I will create another video for this. Now, number three, general truths. So, for example, the sun rises in the east. It doesn't rise in the west. It rises in the east. Water boils at a hundred degrees. So yeah, it boils at a hundred degrees. The moon is a satellite, is a satellite. So the moon is a satellite. So this is always true. Number four, giving instructions or directions. So in this case, you're giving directions to someone. You walk for 200 meters, then you turn left. And we use the present simple or the simple present when we give instructions or directions. Number five, expressing fixed arrangements. So, for example, his father arrives tomorrow. This is a fixed arrangement. You know that his father will arrive tomorrow. So, we use the present simple. His father arrives tomorrow for sure. The train does not arrive until 10 p.m. This is a fixed arra arrangement. The train does not arrive until 10 p.m. Doesn't arrive until 10 p.m. So number six, when telling a story. Example, Mond shows John his collection of banned religious writings and reads aloud long passages from a 19th century Catholic theologian. Yes, so here we have a story. So you're reading a story and you can 
um, tell the story using the present simple. Yes. Okay, so now we have some exercise. I prepare this easy exercise for you to do. So we have to change these statements to questions. She has a lot of experience. So make that one into a question. Number two, he drives to his work. Number three, the new employee comes early. Number four, your co-worker talks to you. So pause the video and write your answers. Now, let's look at the key. Yes, does she have a lot of experience? A lot of people might confuse this with uh, um, has. No, if you have does, you must write the verb in the, at the face form of the verb. So, does she have a lot of experience? Number two, does he drive to work? That's right. Number three, does the new employee come early? And the last one, does your co-worker talk to you? Well, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you have any questions, please type them under this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. Like the video, please, if you liked it, and share it. So, have a great day. See you next time. Bye-bye. Certo, pessoal? Isso aqui é o, é, o, é o explicação também do exercício. Por quê? Nesse exercício aqui, na, no primeiro capítulo do book 4, book 4, o primeiro exercício aqui, o exercício B, é, tá? esse daqui é para traduzir também, agora, né? E, exercise B, fill in the blanks with the correct auxiliary verbs. Quem são esses caras? Adivinhem? Do e does. O exercício é para completar com do ou does. Tá? Vocês têm aí cinco minutos para fazer isso. Por favor.
É, Camille, você perdeu só o. Mandei uma mensagem, você não me. Deixa eu ver. Hello, hello. Ué, por que, que não tá aparecendo aqui? Por que sumiu? Ok? Então vamos lá. Bom, aqui já foi feito o de auxiliar verbs, que é o one I want, que já disse o que, que é, né? Opa! Só ajeitar aqui. Não tô voltando. Tá? Pera aí, pessoal. O meu também tá meio bugado aqui. Ah, tá certo. 4 e 5. E na página 5 tem um exercício, é, basicamente a mesma coisa, né? Fill the blanks, use the correct verbs tense. I wanna get someone, tá aqui usando, né? What do you like to do? Não é uma pergunta. Uh, I, wanna, I wanna be here. É, vocês vão usar o wanna e conjugar com o verbo que tá entre parênteses. Mesma ideia do present de simple present. E depois, write a paragraph about your decision.
tá? Deixa eu esperar mais um pouquinho. Tá o seguinte, pessoal, é, tem mais um exercício aqui que vai falar, na verdade, de futuro, ó, dos futuros, tá vendo? Fill the blanks with the future tense. Para entender o futuro, vamos fazer uma volta aqui, começando... Calma aí, vou fazer dois links. Ele vai estar no... Uhum. Era para estar aqui. Futuro. Ah, tá aqui. Tem que ver dois de uma vez só. Pera aí, personas. Aham. Uhum. Gona. Até vamos entender primeiro... Tem tá algo errado aqui. Uhum. We're gonna run aqui é o futuro Gugona, que é o Going To, na verdade. We're gonna walk, we're gonna sit, we're gonna talk together side by side. Hi, folks. Oh, hello. Hi. What are your names? I'm Alice, and he's Fred. Tell me, Alice. What are you going to do tomorrow? I'm going to work in the yard. What's Fred going to do tomorrow? He's going to fix his car. Yes, I'm going to fix my car and she's going to work in the yard. What's the weather going to be like? It's going to be beautiful. Well, have a nice day. Thanks. You too. Hello. 
Hi. Hello. Tell me, what are you going to do tomorrow? We're going to clean our house. I see. Yes, I'm going to clean the living room, and she's going to clean the basement. No, Harry, you're going to clean the basement, and I'm going to clean the living room. He's going to clean the basement. How about your children? Are they going to help? Oh, yes. They're going to clean the attic. Well, happy cleaning. Thanks. Bye. Who is that? I don't know. What are you going to do today? I'm going to the library. Are you going to the library this morning? Yes, I'm going there right now. What are you going to do this afternoon? I'm going to my chemistry class. I see. Don't forget your chemistry book over there. My chemistry book? Oh, yes. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. Tell me, what are you going to do this evening? I'm going to a concert with some friends, and then we're all going out for a late dinner. Do you have your concert ticket? Yes, here it is. You know, you're going to be tired tonight. That's for sure. Well, have a nice day and enjoy the concert. Thanks. What are Mr. and Mrs. Brown going to do tomorrow? They're going to the beach. Don't forget your sunglasses. They're right here. Are they going to the beach tomorrow morning? You know, Helen, everybody's going to the beach tomorrow morning. You're right, Howard. Let's go tomorrow afternoon. No, I don't think so. I think they're going to the beach tomorrow afternoon. What are they going to do tomorrow evening? I'm going to wear this at the restaurant tomorrow evening. What do you think? It's fine. Do you like this jacket and tie? It's perfect. They're going to a fancy restaurant near the beach. Are they going back home tomorrow night? Don't forget your pajamas and toothbrush. I have them right here. No, they're going to a hotel. Well, I think that's everything. I think so. We're going to have a great time at the beach tomorrow. It's going to be wonderful. Lance. Lance. Hey, what's going on? Lance, when are you going to wash your clothes? I'm going to wash them this week. <laughs> Lance, are you really going to wash them this week? Well, maybe next week. Next week? How about this week? Now, come on, Theodore. Calm down. There's no reason to get angry. I'm going to wash my clothes sometime this month. I promise. This month? Lance, I don't believe this. Are you serious? You're right. This is a very busy month. I'm going to wash my clothes next month, and that's a promise, Theodore. Next month? Lance, I don't believe you. I don't think you're going to wash them next month. In fact, I don't think you're going to wash them this year. Whoa, wh what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? I'm going to wash your clothes. You're going to wash my clothes? Yes, I'm going to wash your clothes because you're not going to wash them. I know it. You're never going to wash them. Gee, Theodore, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Tell you what, Theodore. I'm going to make you a promise. Next year, I'm going to wash your clothes. <laughs> you're going to what? Next year, I'm going to wash your clothes. And that's a promise. <laughs> sure, Lance. It's a promise! Edward, what are you doing? I'm fixing the sink. You're fixing the sink? Yes. Edward, come on. You can't fix the sink. Sure I can. 
When are you going to call the plumber? I'm going to call him right now. Edward, I think we need a plumber immediately. At once. You're right. I'm going to call the plumber right away. I'm going to be very busy next week. It's going to be a very busy week. Do you want to know how busy I'm going to be? I'm going to tell you right now. Next Sunday, I'm going to visit my mother and father. My mother's going to make soup, and my father's going to cook chicken on the barbecue. They're going to ask me about my work. I'm going to ask them about their friends. We're going to have a very nice time. Next Monday, I'm going to go to work. I'm not going to drive my car to work, because I'm going to bring my car to the mechanic, and he's going to fix it. I'm going to take the bus to work. After work, I'm going to take the bus to the garage and get my car. The mechanic's going to give me my bill, and I'm going to be upset, because it's going to cost a lot of money. Next Tuesday, I'm going to get to work early because I'm going to talk to my boss. I'm going to ask my boss for a raise. She's going to say, no, maybe next year. And I'm going to say, OK, and walk out, and I'm going to be sad. Next Wednesday, I'm going to fly to Chicago. I'm going to go to a meeting in the morning. I'm going to have lunch with some people. And I'm going to go to another meeting in the afternoon. I'm going to fly home in the evening, and I'm going to be very tired. Next Thursday, I'm going to write a report about my meetings in Chicago. I'm not going to write about the lunch because the lunch isn't going to be very good. I'm going to type the report on my computer, I'm going to print it on my printer, and I'm going to give it to my boss. Next Friday, I'm not going to go to work right away. I'm going to go to the dentist. My dentist is going to look at my teeth, and his assistant's going to clean them. I'm going to be a little nervous, but my dentist is going to tell me, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you, everything's going to be okay. And I'm going to believe him, because my dentist is a very nice person. Next Saturday, I'm going to relax and have fun. I'm going to go jogging. Then I'm going to go bowling. I'm going to have lunch at my favorite restaurant. Then, in the afternoon, I'm going to go sailing. Then I'm going to go shopping. In the evening, I'm going to go to a movie with some friends, and then we're going to go dancing. Yes, it's going to be a very busy week, but I guess I like it that way. Oh, I'm going to be late. I'm going to go now. Bye. Well, just two more minutes, and it's a brand new year. Just two more minutes? How about that? This sure is a great New Year's party. It sure is. It's a very nice party. Are, Are you looking, looking forward, forward to... to... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Are you looking forward to next year? Yes, I am. How about you? Me too. Next year is going to be a great year. In January, I'm going to start a new job. That's interesting. I'm going to start a new job in February. How about that? In March, I'm going to California to visit my brother. Really? I'm going to California in April to visit my sister. Well, how do you like that? <sighs> May's going to be an exciting month. I'm going to buy a new car in May. What a coincidence. I'm going to buy a new car in June. <sighs> I can't believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> Are you going to go on a summer vacation next year? Yes. I'm going to Canada in July. Don't tell me you're going to Canada, too. <laughs> I sure am. I'm going to go there in August. I always go to Canada in August, every year. <laughs> September is going to be a very important month. In September, I'm going to acting school. No. You're kidding. I'm going to acting school in October. That's incredible. So what's going to happen with you in November? November? Well, um, I'm going to get married in November. You're going to what? I'm going to get married in November. Oh. I suppose you're going to get married in December, right? December? Uh, no. I'm not going to get married in December. Look at the time. It's 12 o'clock. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year.
certo? E aí, baseado nesse futuro que vocês viram, eu vou até soltar um, mais um áudio aqui. Hey, I'm Andy, and I teach English. Today's lesson is on planning for the future. Simple. Today, I will teach three English classes. Tomorrow, I will take my students on a field trip. Next week, I will ask my boss for a raise. And someday, I will travel the world. So, why use the future simple? One reason is to make plans. And how do you use the future simple? Add will. For example, I will teach. You will ask. He travels becomes he will travel. All right, your turn. Fix the sentences. Click pause. Certo? E é o exercício da página 6, os dois. Eu já estou aguardando esse exercício agora.
looking in my eye. I don't know why. Certo? Ó, oh, vocês estão fazendo este exercício? Tem uma variação de Ored e o Yet. No caso, vai ver tudo com o Heavy, né? A diferença é esse daqui é o você já é o já ah, passado vou colocar assim né e esse é o já é, recente Tem uma, tem uma diferença aqui. Porque tá. Tá? Então, have you ever você já para pergunta. E as duas respostas. Have already e você já. E o have just e você já. E aí a gente vem com esse yet. Que significa. Ainda. E é a forma negativa. Opa! Geralmente vem como not yet ou no yet. Tá? Minutos, cadê o ready, ready? Hi classmates, in this lesson we're going to look at more confusing English words. These are already, still or yet. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Already refers to things that have happened or what people think may have happened. It can sometimes suggest surprise because something was unexpected. For example, Is it seven o'clock already? We usually use yet in questions and negatives to talk about things which are expected but which have not happened. For example, have you finished reading that newspaper yet? Meaning, I thought you would have finished by now. Still or not yet are used for situations that are still happening or in continuance. For example, I still meet my friends from my school from time to time. Meaning, I continue to meet my friends. Or, has she finished her homework? Not yet, meaning she's still doing it. Think of some examples for yourself and leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Certo, rapidinho. E na verdade, o exercício aqui é esse aqui, ó. Para escolher o certo. Uma observação importante é que... É, have you decided? Lembre-se que o yet é negativo e o red é afirmativa, tá? E aqui é para escolher o certo. Esse aqui são os dois exercícios. Alguma pergunta?
É, pessoal, é isso aí. Espera aí que eu tô Certo? Bom, vamos lá. O outro exercício aqui é muito parecido, que na verdade é Follow the examples and complete the blanks according to the pictures. I want to have I want to be a chemist. Chemist. I have studied chemistry and uh biochemi biochemistry. Então você vai colocar que você quer e you have to. Bom, uma coisa importante, ó, tá vendo? They want to be Olha a profissão, tá? É, eu não sei se os seus de vocês tem, tem as palavrinhas em cima, porque o meu não tem. É, you want to be, e aí tem a profissão, ó. O trabalho de vocês é encontrar, encontrar cada profissão, tá? E completar com Ana ou want, aqui, ó. Ana ou want. You have to, para quem não lembra, significa... Opa, isso aqui não podia estar aqui. Have to significa ter que. Tá? Então essa é tradu... Também às vezes ele é traduzido como agora. Já que estamos falando de, de expressões igual agora, tá? Beleza, Caio. Caio Black. E o exercício é este. Beleza?
Ok pessoal, tem o último exercício aqui, que é junto com esse, que ainda é para traduzir para o português. Estou também aguardando esse aí, ó. hoje é mais exercício, né? então, página 8.
Então, beleza. É o seguinte, pessoal. Eu vou utilizar para com a gente nas próximas aulas para quem não conhece esse sistema aqui da Evoluped, ó, tem uns uns materiais aqui. Beleza? Eu vou enviar um link agora. Ó, isso aqui das 4 às 6, ó. Se ele cai, ó. Eita, não é isso não. Mas bem nas próximas, tá? Se alguém não lembrar a senha, o usuário, aí se não lembrar o usuário e senha, aí vocês perguntem para a Stephanie que ela vai ajudar no usuário e senha. Beleza? Pessoal, vai encerrar nesse, nesse exercício mesmo, na tradução, tá vendo? Não vamos passar daqui. Tá, então estou esperando esses exercícios de vocês, ó. Apenas estes, ó. Tem a tradução. Nada mais. Se alguém não entendeu, já sabe que o vídeo fica gravado. Qualquer dúvida, pergunta pra mim. Hoje foi mais uma aula de atividades mesmo, tá? É, já disse, na próxima aula nós também... É, é tudo normal, tá? Continua com live, continua com tudo. Mas eu vou fazer os exercícios da, da Evoluped paralelo. Beleza? O link eu mandei no grupo. Quem não lembrar de senha, de nada... Fala com a Stephanie que ela vai ajudar. Beleza? É isso aí, pessoal. Espero que vocês tenham entendido. Eu achei simples, né? Eu acho que não tem muito. Já fizeram exercícios muito parecidos com esse, relacionados, né? Que o ano é mó tranquilo e o futuro que nós já vimos diversas vezes, né? É, espero que vocês tenham entendido. Qualquer coisa pode perguntar para mim. Muito obrigado pela participação de vocês. E até a próxima. Muito bom final de tarde, agora à noite. Fiquem todos com Deus. Bye, bye.